This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Welcome back. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey. Today we're talking with Chief Cultivation Officer of Jeff McManus Group, author, he's Director of Landscape Service at the University of Mississippi as well, Jeff McManus. So if you'd like to ask Jeff a question or give us a call, well, you can do that. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-674-7464. And now we're going to welcome Jeff to the show. Hey, Marshall. Good to hear from you. Man, I tell you what, Jeff, I am glad to hear you too. I miss seeing you. I have been up to Oxford a few times, but it's always a hit or miss trip um, because we just don't get super social these days. But i um, been thinking about you. The campus looks gorgeous as usual. Um, obviously, there aren't a lot of kids messing things up now that much, but um, just wanted to check in with you today and see how you're doing because I figured you probably could give us some good advice on how to get through the rest of this year and into next year. Well, it, it's definitely been a, a challenging, different year for us as well. You know, the biggest thing that most of our alumni and friends have noticed uh, all across the state is no tailgating, right? No, it's really affected football this year. So that's, that's been a big change and to be able to stay positive through all that and, and to see that. But it's, it's made the workload a little bit different. We've, we've had to re, you know, refocus some areas, but we, we, net, we don't have to pick up 90 tons of of waste out of the grove this year. So I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you and say, I didn't miss that. I didn't miss that <laughs> at all this year. So uh, that's, that's one of the things I'm not look. I, I am looking forward to one day when I don't have to do that, but uh, nonetheless, it, it's been a different challenging year. We've seen green space really play a role in helping people this year. You know, just, I know you're a runner and you like to be outside and it, what, you know, mental aspects that does to help us all. So that's the great part of being about a campus is having that grove and, and that green space. Well, I tell you what, and, I, and I've seen several colleges utilize it. I know Ole Miss does it as well as anybody because you're we're so blessed there that there's so many nice places. I say we, I mean, I've taught a class up there, uh, but it's nice to be able to get out and, and have that safe space where you don't have to worry about the virus like you would on the indoors. But it also helps when it absolutely looks like a national park at the same time. Um, now I got to tell you, I got to go backwards a little bit. You had mentioned the cleaning up the Grove and, and even if you're not an Ole Miss fan, I, I think the process that, you know, right before the game, suddenly the barrels appear like magic mushrooms. They just pop up out of nowhere. And then it seems like little elves come in the middle of the night and clean up all the garbage and take it off. And, but you, you really have a really neat plan on how you do that. And you, you create a way to actually benefit fit different organizations that come and help you pick up stuff. Tell us a little bit about that, because I just always think that's really a great idea. Well, that's true. It's uh, I don't care what, what college campus you're on. Everybody has to have a plan to deal with football. It's just a major, you know, it's a great event here in the South. We love football and we love what it does for our fans. But, you know, at the end, nobody really thinks about the support aspect of it. And, and when you're hauling out 90 tons of, of waste and recycles and so forth, you better have a plan, especially if you want to have it done before Sunday morning, before everybody goes to church. And so that's our, that's really our goal is to, we want to make that that wow, you know, people drive into campus and go, wow, man, where where did all that trash go? And so that's that's one of our experiences that we want to create for our customers, uh, for our students and our faculty and friends. So what we do is we have a lot of meetings and uh, groups, and we actually plan through how we're going to tackle the actual cleanup and getting the growth back to normal. And so it. You you say we look like elves or it feels like elves are there, and I guess I'm an elf because I'm out there at midnight after the ball game, and we have a, a crew, probably about six of our full-time employees. But what's the magic, what really is what you talked about, was we get to hire nonprofit organizations. Uh, I'll give you an example. The, the Baptist Student Union is one. The Navy ROTC, the midshipmen would be another. So we get to hire students who actually are a part of the campus to come out and clean up the grove. Uh, uh, so at midnight, they'll come out with us and they'll do the heavy lifting. So it's not unusual if you come here at midnight, not many people are except for us are cleaning up 
to see 100 to 200 college kids actively cleaning up. And so they're raising money for their particular organization for whatever they need. I know the, the Baptist Student Union raises money, and then they turn around and put it back into the community. Uh, the same with the midshipmen. They're, they're using it for their events. And they say, what a great way for them to raise money instead of selling wrapping paper or donuts. And they say they can come out there, get sweaty, roll their sleeves up, help the campus and then help their organization as well. So there's a lot of wins in, in the actual cleanup and the way we've been able to, the administration has been so supportive in us helping other uh, nonprofit student organizations be a part of this. We're speaking with the Director of Landscape Services at the University of Mississippi, but he's also an author and a speaker and an all-around good guy. With Jeff McManus is with us. If you'd like to give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. We got Rita from Gulfport on the line. Hello, Rita. What's your question for Jeff? Uh, yes, I have an olive tree. It's uh, three or four years old, and it got blown over in the storm. But I quickly got some help and got it stood back upright with some uh, ratchet straps. And how long should I hold those ratchet straps on there? Well, that's uh, that's a good question. Typically, we don't want to go more than a year on any type of support on trees. Uh, we want them to get back naturally where they can move. It's good for a tree trunk to be able to move in the wind and sway. That's part of how it, its uh, uh, interior works as far as pumping nutrients out to the outer parts of the tree. So about a year, you should be back stable and hopefully uh, able to take those uh, straps off as well. Okay. I put uh, some topsoil, you know, on top of it. And uh, do, you know, do you know anything about olive trees? Well, I know trees in general. You don't want to you don't want to put too much soil on top and cover up the flare of the base of the trunk of the tree. And so, when you're putting that on there, make sure you water that soil in that you get it in the cracks and cre crevices in there and get out the air pockets that allow those roots to grow back in the soil. And so, don't don't um, just pile it up. Sometimes you, we call those volcanoes where people just pile up too much mulch or soil up the base of the tree, and that can be detrimental to your tree. Okay. Well, the olive tree has real shallow roots. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and a lot well, of our trees do, and so that that's a that that echoes my point. So that's another reason why you don't want to you don't want to put a lot. That's just like you and I putting something over our nose that we can't breathe. And so, make sure, <laughs> like a you know, mask. just make sure, yeah, exactly like a mask or uh, or three or four or five masks, and then you really can't breathe. So just be sure you're working that in, but don't overdo it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank Rita. You. Great call. Hey, you know, Jeff, that was actually a pretty good metaphor for 2020. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> It was. So basically, yeah, I mean, uh, the wind has blown us over, but don't you know, don't let the straps, you know, hang on for more than a year and then we'll be all right. But let me ask you this. How have you coped through 2020? Because like I said, you know, suddenly you, you have a different scenario. We touched on a little bit about with no no grove uh, fun anymore. So you don't have to deal with that. But, you know, there are some new challenges on the campus. Obviously, you also have to worry about your team because there's COVID going around. So you have to worry about your team getting sick. You have to worry about you getting sick. You have to worry about your family getting sick. And obviously, you can't exactly cut the grass and work from home. That's packed. There's a, there's a lot of challenges. That's called leadership, I guess. You know, that's uh, you've got to you've got to deal with a lot of different scenarios. But I think the first thing that came to mind was is that as the leader, is you've got to be present. Okay, I had to be present. I had to be here. And so for me to try to operate from home was not going to make sense, uh, not for our particular operations. The trees and grass didn't understand that we were going through COVID and everybody had to go home. You know, students went home, uh, faculty went home. A lot of people were able to work remotely, but there are just some aspects, buildings. We had a lot of our facilities people still here. We had a lot of our landscaping folks here. And so we just had to keep trucking along. It goes, man, plants are still doing their thing. So we got to, we still got to be engaged. But I think for teams, to me, the biggest thing was for me to be here 
to lead by example, is to make sure that I was a part of the problem solving. I didn't try to solve all the problems, Marshall, uh, but what I did is let our folks have input and, and we would resolve them together. And I would help frame that up let, and lead the discussions, but there were things that we had to work out. Uh, we couldn't have but uh, 10 people in the building at one time in our, in our building, and we have a staff of 33 people here. So we had to figure out how do we do that. And um, things just had to be changed. And I'm not, I, I felt that leadership in my area, I was able to get some great feedback from our team on things that people would buy into and uh, things like the mask uh, only have it. And then we'd have to split our, our crews up into different uh, starting times and quitting times, which we had never done. And just little inconveniences, but things that they were able to make work. You know, you are, you, it's hard to believe that you've been at Ole Miss now for 20 years. Crazy. I know the time flies, doesn't it? It really does. Uh, um, you know, uh, Dr. Kayat brought you in. Yeah. Um, he wisely realized that, uh, that first impressions mattered for students when they were coming on recruiting. And, and tell us a little bit about, you know, your philosophy, because you came and, and, and if anybody knows anything about budgets in Mississippi knows that there's just not tons of cash flowing around. So you came into a situation where you wanted to create a, a million dollar look and you had a million dollars to spend on it. Well, that's, you know, Dr. Kayat knew that first impressions matter. And we were just talking about this just a few minutes ago before you called. We were having our Monday morning meeting with our staff, with our landscaping, our, our frontline teams who do the incredible work. And we said, you know, if you go to the grocery store and you've got to pick bananas and you're not making the banana nut bread, as one of our staff pointed out, and you're just, you're just going to have a good, good banana, which one are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the one that's really brown? And, and it's gone past its shelf life, or are you going to pick that fresh one? And, and w the point was, is we base so much on appearance, right? We, we pick our, our fresh produce, our fresh things like that with our eyes. And believe it or not, we pick a lot on college campuses, the studies show, based on appearances, the way it makes us feel. Uh, there was a study out a few years back, 62% of prospective college students make a decision in the first few minutes of a visit if they're going to come to that school. And so we want to we want to make that great impression. We want mamas and daddies and students when they drive onto campuses go, wow, this is this is nice. I didn't realize how beautiful this place is and want to be a part of a winning organization. And so that's that's a big part of getting our staff to buy in is to realize that they're not just cutting grass. They're not just pulling weeds, but they're creating this unique learning uh, possibility, this campus where they can, students come here and learn how to cure cancer, right? Or go on and, and write great novels like, you know, John Gresham, who was in school for a while here and, and others. And, and so they do that, whether it's our campus or any other campus, it's important for that appearance. And that's, that's what we had to realize, what kind of, whatever kind of budget we had, we had to do the best we could to make the campus look loved, as Dr. Chikaya used to say, make it look loved. And so that's what we try to do every day is make it look loved and make it where you're, you want your sons and daughters to come here, Marshall. We want, you know, we're going to try to get them here as best we can and convince you to spend your hard-earned money here at Ole Miss. We're going to take a quick break and when we return, we'll continue our discussion with Jeff McManus. And if you have any questions or comments for Jeff, well, give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672- 7464. Hey, stay tuned. This is Now You're Talking on TV Think Radio. Stewart, digital media specialist here at MPB. I'd like to wish Mississippi Public Broadcasting a happy 50th anniversary. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, professor of pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and host of Southern Remedies, Relatively Speaking. Join us as we explore issues that relate to you and your family from mental health obstacles and family interactions to handling life disruptions. 
Whatever the issue, let's try to figure it out together. You can listen live Tuesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hey, welcome back. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey. I'm the editor-at-large at Mississippi Today. So draw cartoons. You've probably seen a couple of those over the last, oh, I don't know, a couple decades or so. Hey, today we've been talking with the chief cultivation officer of the Jeff McManus Group. He's the author and director of Landscape Services at, at Ole Miss. It's Mr. Jeff McManus. Jeff's with us. And if you'd like to get, ask him a question, well, you can give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Jeff, I really wanted to get you on today. I, I always enjoy your tweets. You're very positive. Um, you're always promoting good things and promoting and so forth. And, and I really do think that your attitude is pretty incredible. And, I, and it's I know I talk to a lot of people and this year it's, you know, people say, Hey Marshall, um, I've had a decent year. We've stayed healthy, but I'll be honest with you. The walls are starting to close in on us a little bit. I've been struggling at work. I'm trying to keep my, my employees motivated. And I kind of want to get you on today, Jeff, to be honest with you, because I know you've got a new book coming out and I want you to talk about that too, but really I just want to get your advice on, you know, how to cope when you're in a situation where you have no control, whether both as a leader and, you know, I would say manager, but I mean, as a leader, I think there's, there is a difference between being a manager and a leader and also too, just as an individual as well. Well, that's, that's what we're all going through. There's so much is out of our hands right now, isn't there? I mean, it's just so much we can't, that we're used to making decision zones that we never thought about that we took for granted, but now it's a big deal. So the one thing that we can always control is our response. We may not like having to wear a mask. We may not like people not wearing masks, whatever it may be, but we can control our response. And I feel like that that controls the way we feel about things. If we let it get us so upset, what everybody else is doing, that, that we, we start inviting stress in our life it was not intended to. We are, we're like we're carrying the world's problems on our shoulders. And I see so many people trying to fix this, trying to fix this situation. If we could just get people to do this, if we could just get people to do that, you know, then we could life can go back to normal. And instead, you know, people are pretty smart. People can make their own decisions. And so I, what I've chosen, instead of getting upset, if I see, a, you know, something that maybe I feel like needs to be fixed is is to let is to realize that they're grown adults and they can make those decisions. Now in the workplace, that's a different setting where we we need to show uh, leadership and have some guidelines and then we're helping people along. But the key is, is to communicate, right? Communicate, be amongst the team, talk with the team, even stop and pause for a moment and have some reflection and give people an avenue to talk to speak and to, and to maybe get some things off their chest. Uh, I have found that to be extremely helpful. Uh, I do a, a one-on-one time where we, uh, we've had to modify this. We used to just jump in a golf cart and, and just ride one-on-one with our staff. It, it takes 15, 20 minutes, but I've tried to just build relationships. I figure if, if we can talk, we can resolve a lot of issues. And so that's that's what I want to do is, is interact and talk with people. And a lot of times these issues are just things that nobody's given them a voice or nobody's let them vent or let them talk about. And I've been able to get some great insights from our team that have kept me uh, going in a, in a very positive direction. So that, I think, talking and communication helps keep the walls from coming in, as, as you were saying so much on our teams and and being there and being present with them. 
like you said, um, and two, and I think it like it helps you. It, number one, it allows you to know what's going on, but also to allows them to have buy in and feel like that they're not hopeless, that their situation is hopeless, that they can actually have a little bit of input as well. Hey, look, if you'd like to ask Jeff a question, you can give us a call at 877 MPV Ring. That's 877 672 7464, just like Landon has, who is somewhere south of Batesville right now. He's on the road. Hey, Landon, how are you today? Good morning. I just wanted to say thanks, Jeff, for making the campus so beautiful. I went to Ole Miss, really enjoyed it. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us about the Catalpa tree right there next to the student union that's so huge. Sure. Uh, the Catalpa tree there is a northern Catalpa tree. So for those who are not familiar with the, the campus at Ole Miss, we have a champion tree uh, there uh, on campus. And the champion tree is, is just sort of like it says, it's the largest, it's the biggest tree in the state of Mississippi. And so the, the northern Catawba tree there has been there probably, my guess is it's probably been there since the campus started if, or soon after. Uh, the circumference on it is uh, 22 feet. And so it's at the, at the breast height there. And it's uh, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, in the southeast as well. So it's a, it's a nice tree, but it is a weak wooded tree. So it's soft wooded. And so what we're seeing, if you do come on campus, you're going to see some braces under that tree where we're trying to, uh, to kick the can, so to speak, down the road on the, holding, that, holding that tree together. We've got some straps up in the tree. We had a straight line wind probably 10 years ago that really did a number on that tree and, and uh, split it. So we're, we're trying to preserve it as long as we can. We actually put a fence around it. Uh, just to keep people from climbing into the tree. It's such a unique tree and easy to get into some of the lower limbs, but we felt for safety we needed to, with the condition it's in, put that around, protect the tree and protect everyone as well. But it's a gorgeous tree, beautiful flowers in May as well. And um, we have given away some of those trees at some of our events, some of the seedlings, um, uh, given them away in our uh, Tree Campus USA program. Usually we'll have about 30 or 40 to the, people who come and, and give away some of those seedlings of the old, the champion tree there. Thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah, that's it. A, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the call. Appreciate that, Landon. Um, that's the tree is right by the student union, correct? That's right. Come out of the student. If yeah. you came out of the student union, groves in front, it's over to the right. That, that must have been a challenge to protect it while the construction was going on, too. Well, that was another reason why we wanted that fence. We knew construction was coming. And uh, our construction, you know, construction gets going. A lot of times you don't know what's going on at, when you're not here. So we, we put that nice fence around it. We were very fortunate the administration had supported that. And so we were uh, put that up prior to that. So we really didn't have a lot of problems uh, with that tree and the construction. It was a, it was a good call all the way around. Oh, very cool. All right, we've got, let's see, we've got David on the line uh, from Memphis. Hello, David. How are you? And thanks for calling today. Hey, hotty toddy, everybody. Hey, Jeff, uh, three, three things. Uh, I agree with the, your uh, philosophy on one-on-ones, especially with the current uh, pandemic uh, we're uh, all going through. Um, and I found it very beneficial to, uh, to allow your staff to vent you know, those one-on-ones are very critical to let them talk about their feelings, their emotions, how it's affecting them. And then I found one stress reliever to, to kind of reassure them on is you can only control what you can control. And we are, we are in control of, you know, uh, following the, the, the protective measures that are out there that uh, smarter people than us have, have, have uh, recommended. Um, so that, I found that that has allowed people to kind of relax that, you know, only stress what I can have an impact over. Uh, second of all, great job by your staff that has cleaned up after the tailgates over the many years. That is a thankless job. They've done a fabulous uh, a job at that over the years. And then what I'd like to ask you is, can you talk about managing an airport? Many people don't realize that that falls under your area of responsibility there. Well, David, I appreciate the call, and thanks for the, the, the words there. The, the airport is an interesting in, engagement in itself. Uh, we are actually the second busiest airport in the state of Mississippi, 
uh, because of football games. Uh, we that's those are our seven big uh, events on campus, but we are we oversee a, an airport that is um, unique to a small town, and it's one of the driving engines. That if a small town doesn't have an airport, it's I think it's going to be tough. So I think Oxford has benefited tremendously, and the campus has as well, because when you're trying to attract uh, top uh, business leaders and you're trying to attract some of the the people who are, are engines that can help drive um, economic change an airport is absolutely critical to the area and so we have seen uh, the sport from the university who, uh, running that airport has been tremendous so we we actually not only do we maintain all the the turf and grass it's 200 acres out here on the one on campus but we also do everything inside the terminal maintain it and take care of all the fueling as well uh, our employees do all the the training with the ffa and all that stuff and uh, i'm sorry ffa uh, what am i what, uh, yeah faa I, I was in yeah <laughs> get those two sometimes crazy reverse but um it's a unique opportunity so we got a good team out there that does a great job and it's been a lot of fun uh doing the airport yeah, jerry who's got a question Jeff as well hello Jerry how are you I'm fine thank you uh I'd like to ask with kind of a multifaceted question and then I'll ask it and then I'll hang up uh what items do you mainly pick, uh pick up to be recycled from the band band base you know leftovers and how do y'all deal with that recycling program and also with that many trees and stuff on campus do you guys you know compost and reuse all the you know, basically the fertility from the leaves and the grass clippings? Yeah, I'm going to start with that question, Jerry, first. That's a good question. Absolutely. We we try to keep 100% of the leaves on campus, and so there's a lot of things that you can do to recycle leaves. Uh, a lot of times, whether it's putting on mulching blades on the mowers and mulch those back into the area. After a while, you get too big of a buildup, and, and we'll haul it to our, our composting area that we have on campus. But we try to keep everything we can because we can reuse it. Uh, we'll we'll bring in a tub grinder and grind up uh, a lot of our our leaves and not only that but our trees and any of our green waste and then either turn it back into some type of mulch or something that we can reuse on campus compost and we try to reuse that. Uh, I can't say 100% for sure. It's probably 99%. I'm sure a little bit gets in the dumpster from time to time, but it's it's really high up there. That's just it's it makes sense because it saves a lot of money and we can reuse it. Uh, going back to the football, uh, actually we have a separate department. Our sustainability department works with us, and they provide us and we help implement and and put out distribute uh, the 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 recycle bins out on the in the Grove and Circle area. And so they're collecting all the recycles that they can, that the city will take uh, at the Oxford. And so they're going through and sorting that on, on Sunday and, and figuring out a lot of times things get contaminated in there. It's amazing what people will put in the recycle bins as well. And so they'll have to go through and sort all that. But I know the, the bottles and a lot of the cups and those types of things are being recycled as well. And, uh, and a tub grinder, that's a big boy toy, isn't it? Man, that's a big boy toy, and actually, we'll we will put that out for you know bid or contract, and have somebody come in and do it. Usually, about once every five years is about what we're tub grinding. We'll just we'll just accumulate it and then just grind it all up. And boy, you talking about some good looking compost and mulch? That's some good stuff right there. All right, well done. Thank you, sir. Great call. Thank you so much for calling. We're going to go ahead and take our last break right now. When we return, we're going to wrap up our conversation with Jeff McManus. He's the author of, and director of Landscape Services at the University of Mississippi. Hey, remember, hey, look, if you have a question or comment, we had a lot of great calls today. Thank you so much for calling. The number is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. So go ahead and stay tuned. This is Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. 
This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us today on Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey. I'm editor-at-large at Mississippi Today and also a well, cartoonist and, of course, your host today. I hope you're having a great Monday, and thank you for listening. We've got a great guest today. We've been catching up with him. He's been on the show before. He'll be on the show again. He's just a, it's a great guy, somebody I'm really always glad to run into personally. He's Jeff McManus. He's the chief cultivation officer at the Jeff McManus Group. He's an author and Director of Landscape Services at the University of Mississippi. Um, if you've not been up to the campus at Ole Miss, it is definitely one of the most gorgeous campuses on, in the country. Several other colleges have followed his uh, lead. Uh, I went to the University of Tennessee. I went up there recently. It looks like a whole different place. I think a lot of it's just because of the competition, and I think Jeff's done a great job uh, inspiring other campuses to try to pick up the game a little bit. Jeff, you know, of course, you talk about the Jeff McManus group. You have Your first book was fantastic. It talked a lot about leadership. Um, You do the Jeff McManus group. You do a lot of speaking. You and I both do a lot of speaking. I know the world has changed on us because of the virus. So you now do a lot of speaking on Zoom, probably like I do. But you decided to come up with a second book. And I'm really excited. That's why I wanted to get you on today. It's called Tailgate Huddles. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, you're you're absolutely right. Things have changed in the speaking world, but people still are needing leadership values and principles and and, and answers. So tailgate huddles, it's 30 qualities to cultivate in your team. So what we what we what I've done is I've taken some short stories. Just every every page is a short story and I weaved into that story a quality. So we may talk about the eye for detail. What does it mean to have an eye for detail? And then I'll I'll define that. I'll put that in a quote and then I'll use that in a short story. And the intent of the book is is that you can use this to use with your staff to talk about that quality. What does it mean to have an eye for detail? Um, And the great part of it is, is you're getting your staff to interact. You know, you get buy-in when you listen to your team and you get them to participate. Uh, if we're simply just preaching to our teams, then uh, they're just going to sh- nod their head and 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 not be as engaged and as active. So what I've always tried to do here at Ole Miss is, is to get people to participate in the process, that we're working together. I'm not the boss. They're not working for me. Uh, they're working with me, right? And Dr. Kayat was uh, instrumental in, in teaching me that years ago, that we're doing this work together. So uh, a lot of our team come in from you know, different parts of industry. They don't always have the, the background. Very few have a background in high-end properties and how to maintain them so that they pop and create that curb appeal. So this is a great little tool that I've used. Uh, just even another little word that in my book is dependable. You know, a lot of us, you know, we understand what dependable means, but maybe, maybe that staff person uh, that we've hired doesn't always know what that means or was taught that. So these little stories uh, help uh, take you in that conversation in a positive way. And then it has a couple of questions at the end for discussion. So the intent is that as you're going out to work in the morning, that there can be just a little quick discussion on values that will help your organization get stronger and cultivate greatness. You're um What's coming up for you in 2021? Because I know you got the Great Teams Academy coming up, and that sounds really exciting. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be working with leaders and and helping them, uh, you know, grow their leaders, grow even you know, job. You know, a lot of people are doing really well during this time, and their growth opportunity is you know their their struggle is is getting good people and getting the right people in. So we're gonna try to help them uh, cultivate great leaders. Uh, great, great organizations. And so doing those type of things, we do some webinars. I do some webinars from time to time to help people and do some online classes as well. You know, I'm in the education world. I'm in the, the training business and teaching business. And that's that's what I love about uh, what I get to do is, uh, is I get to help grow others. I, I grow plants, but what I really like doing is growing people who grow plants and, and grow organizations. 
That's one of the things, I mean, like I said, when you came in on this job, you, you obviously had the knowledge on how to be able to make a plant grow or make different plants look really nice in different areas and everything. But if the rest of your team wasn't following along behind you, it didn't have that same buy-in, then it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, because you're not, just not capable of taking care of, of the whole campus by yourself. You you managed to, another thing I think I really respect about you on that too is that you have a plan and it's a plan that other universities have been able to to kind of replicate and you're very you're, you're you've been actually going around not only talk to corporations you talk to the other universities and kind of work with their teams too tell us a little bit how you came up with that plan well we developed a plan and Dr. Kayat was so instrumental in talking about getting buy-in getting buy-in if you can get people to work along with you trust you things just go so much smoother and easier and productivity skyrockets. So you got to build trust, right? And so trust is instrumental in all this. And so what we have done is we created this program called Landscape University, and we have created a conference here on campus where, where we have shared this with uh, dozens and dozens of campuses across the Southeast and actually across the country where they have come here to learn how we systematically have developed a way to not only you know, talk about these qualities that we were just talking about, but to onboard their people so that they're bought in. So they're, they're, they're realizing early on what it is that we're doing. They see the vision of where we're going. So we, we, we show them how to do those ingredients. It's real easy to create a class. I can just sit here in my office and pound out a class and make it and type it out. But what's the trick is, is how do I get my staff to be a part of that? and that they want to be it, that they want to be coaches to their staff, their people, mentors, and help them be successful. And so if I've got that going on, I've got a big win going on. So I saw that more as a teaching opportunity to share with other universities and how to raise our industry, how to get our industry even at a higher level. And so we, we've had a lot of fun and success in, in teaching others how to do that. Jeff, when does the book come out? book's going to come out probably the 1st of March. So we're, we're doing the last parts on it now. It's going to come out in 1st of March. Oh, that's exciting. Real quick, in the last minute that we have here, what advice do you give to managers who are managing people that are working from home? Because, you know, it's, it's easy to put somebody in a golf cart and ride around with them. You have that interpersonal connection that sometimes it's hard to replicate when you're using a computer. What advice would you give to people that are trying to stay in touch with their team members? Well, it's, it's easy to get busy and not do what's important, okay? So it's easy to get busy and become lazy. And what's important is making sure that we're touching those relationships, we're interacting with those, those key people in our organization. And for me, I'm trying to touch every person, not, not physically, but I'm trying to interact with them in some way so that they know that they're valued. I, even when I know the answers, Marshall, to a question, I ask my staff because I want their input. I want them to know that I value them and I want their input. The, the highest honor we can give people is to ask for their opinion. And so I know the direction we want to go. We're going to be one of the best campuses in America. But then I want to, I want to see if you see the things that I see. So I may walk you outside and say, hey, what do you see here that needs to be done? What, what do you think? Now, I know everything needs to be done, but I've got to have those conversations. Fantastic, Jeff. Your website real quick before we go. Hey, jeffmcmanus.com. Jeff, it's always good to talk to you and always good to hear from you. Well, I think we've come to the end of another great show. I want to thank you for joining us and thank our guest, Chief Cultivation Officer of the Jeff McManus Group. He's author and director of landscape services at the University of Mississippi, Jeff McManus. Uh, if you'd like to hear the show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on mpbonline.org. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio, produced by Michelle McAdoo. Hey, stay tuned for Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit with Josie Bidwell. And be sure to join us next Monday. We're going to be here next Monday. Got a great guest lined up for you then, too, at 10 a.m. for another great conversation here.